Hey, what's up, guys? The ranked 15 player in the world rode his way to the top of the leaderboard with a hog rider deck that counters the meta. This innovative strategy destroys minor poison. By always catching miners with ice spirits and stacking up giant skeletons, in double elixir, you can hog rider lightning and break through their building every time. And beatdown decks get obliterated by this deck's defenses with giant skeleton, Tesla, and little prince. You'll keep up with other royal hogs and hog rider cycle decks with earthquakes since you have an ice spirit skeleton's fast cycle. Even with all the insane mid ladder monsters that come out full force on ladder, you're going to be safe with a fast cycle because of the adaptability. Being able to speedily spam cards like Ice Spirit and Skeletons allows you to get back to the Giant Skeleton or Tesla that you need for clutch defenses. This is by far the best Hog Rider deck in the game. The only downside is it takes a bit more skill. When you have high cost cards like Giant Skeleton and Lightning, instead of having Fireball and Knight, you're not allowed to make as many mistakes. Because you'll get punished and you won't be able to afford your counters. It's time to embrace the life of a Lightning Quick Card Cycle and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Credit Code Sir Tag to make all the daily videos possible. Yo, this guy finished top 1000 in the world. Let's go. So starting play for us is going to be Cycloid Skellies in the back just to spam around the evolution. And we're going to go for a Little Prince as well. So unfortunately, the Little Prince gets fully canceled out by the Miner. And if he's going to drop a small spell, then it gets deleted and he gets damage on the tower. But if he doesn't drop that small spell, it's just a 3 for 3 trade and it's fine. I'm going to go for arrows here so we're able to finish off the Firecracker. Look at the Little Skeleton locking on the tower. Wait, this is ridiculous. Y'all might not see this. But it is insidious how much damage you can ramp up with one skeleton if you're tanked for. Whether it's with a miner or a giant skeleton or a hog rider, that one skeleton sufficiently spooked our opponent. So you just want to keep tanking for those skeletons if you can. And that's the magic of, you know, going in for those aggressive plays when you have the skeleton split at the start. We're going to go for Ice Spirit here as well. And unfortunately, he hits a perfect tornado timing to activate King Tower. So we're playing against a weird Golem deck. Not often do you see Golem Night Witch in the meta anymore. I want to cycle Skeletons here just to figure out what he's going to be running with it. And then I'll go in for my Tesla last possible second to pull the Golem as much as I possibly can. So that Golem will get pulled and it's not necessarily something that he was expecting. We're going to go in for a Giant Skeleton here on the Miner because we didn't really want to go Little Prince. <laughs> Way into last possible second because we identified, hey, I mean, it's got like a weird Golem deck. If you end up making a misplay and going in for the obvious play of Little Prince on top of the Baby Dragon, you're probably just going to lose the opponent predicting you and going in for the Miner, especially when they're a top 1,000 player. You don't give them the availability to make out plays against you. Instead, what you try to do is you wait for them to make an overcommitment, and then you try to punish them. Because a lot of times, these overpowered players are trying to make fancy predictions all game long because they feel like they're good enough to do that. So I'm going to go for Skellies here, and then I'm going to go Hog Rider. And now, since we're up Elixir, I can click the Little Prince ability and force that Elixir on both sides. So if he misses the Tornado, then this could be huge. He's going to have to use Tornado and Zap. And the good thing is, like, I mean, that kind of counters my Evolved Skeletons, but you're literally dropping a solid 5 Elixir to counter stupid 1 Elixir Skeletons. It's just kind of dumb, if you ask me. Also, if he goes Golem in the back, we're in a Giant Skeleton at the river, and I think he'll go Golem in the back is exactly when we do this. Yes! Let's go! Dude, we're out playing one of the best players in the game. Let's freaking go. That's what we like to see. Obviously, the skeleton is again alive on the tower. I don't even know how that happens. This should be straight up illegal. That is stupid that it's doing that amount of work. All right, we're going to go Little Prince before we go in for the Tesla because we want to drop our Tesla a lot later out here. I bet you he goes in for a Miner. If not, then I'd be kind of surprised. Try to knock everything back, and then we can go encounter the Miner with Skeletons and maybe even go in for a Giant Skeleton again. So trying to protect our Tesla as long as possible is the play here. I can go for easy arrows value on all of those bats that are accumulating and the firecracker, making sure that we can pull back most of his stuff with an ice spirit is ideal. And then we can go in for a little prince here and then probably just evolve skeletons on this as well. We know that lightning will snag the tower, so that's all we have to do is defend until then. And yeah, I think I win the game, guys. Let's freaking go. Easy cleanup. We're going to arrows just to guarantee it doesn't do enough. And then lightning away with victory. I mean, there's no way that this guy's going to have like Nightwish spawning 10 different bats and then have them become evolved and then have enough HP to block my lightning. Since regular bats only have an abysmal 119 health, there was no way for him to stop the lightning, no matter how many the Nightwish cooked up for him. And after crumbling that top 1,000 golem player, we've gone up to 6,700 in the world. Yo, we got to give you some mana. I feel like he's in the wrong game. There's elixir out here, bro. There's gold. There's gems. There's no mana resource. So if you guys are wondering how we're going to be resourceful and break through his bomb tower, in Double Elixir, that's where we're able to make it happen. The magic doesn't happen in single because you're not going to be able to afford a lightning with a hog rider if the opponent is going to do any competent offense at the same time. Because if you decide to go for a lightning hog rider, that's literally your entire elixir bank, 10 elixir, and then you're sitting there like, oh, I have no answer for a hog rider because I don't have 4 elixir for a Tesla. So don't do anything stupid until Double Elixir and until you have identified the deck. So the Giant Skeleton, I don't think it's going to splash onto the Little Prince. Little Prince is slow. 
taking his time. He's royalty after all. Oh, that means that my little prince is literally on a timer that is gone. I'm going to ice beard on the little prince. We should be able to finish it off without any damage. I'm going to hog rider. So generally, I wouldn't lightning right now, but I think it's going to be a minor poison deck. So I'm going to go for the lightning. So the reason why I did that is because I know that I can't get punished. Most of the time, if you do that and you don't know what your opponent's deck is and they go in for an aggressive play, you're screwed. You just instantaneously lose. But the worst thing that can happen to me is he throws a miner with a shovel at my tower. And that thing is a squeaky plush toy that might squeak and slap my tower for two or three hits. But it's not like it's a balloon. It's not like it's a royal giant. It's not like it's a hog rider. That thing is dead to arrows. Plus, you know, the goblins are going to give us the nice trade as well. We hit five elixir there with a solid three and we took a little bit of damage. So well worth it. Because the lightning does way more damage to the tower there. Anyway, we're able to use our giant skeleton and counter push here every time. Generally dropping our little prince up higher so he's not able to poison on top of the little prince and the tower at the same time. So we want to win bridge battles decisively here. Idealistically, that's what's going to happen. I think he's going to click the ability. I mean, I would if I was him. I want to go in, kill it, please. Nice, beautiful. And our little prince perseveres through the pain and suffering. We can go for a hog rider here too and then arrows on the goblins. I think this is worth it because we're able to hit the bomb tower too. Yo, he's got Evolve Knight. That card cooks. Hold up. Let him that card cooks. Please take maximum damage. I think it wasn't moving, so it did take max damage there. All right, we're going to go in for Skeletons here first. And we're going to go Giant Skeleton. Fortunately for us, I think the Giant Skeleton is thick enough to draw the attention of the Evolve Knight. He didn't drop the Miner in the back far enough so that the Giant Skeleton would have to waddle its way back. Wait, we can go for a Lightning now. It's Double Elixir. We found our moment to shine. And this is going to be divine. I wonder if there's anything... Ah, uh, you know, you, we're just lightning that and hitting the little prince because now I don't even have to respond to that. That's light work. I think he was thinking he was big brain for a second, but in reality, he just delivered even more of a positive issue trait for us. We go Ice Spirit. We can go for another Giant Skeleton if we wanted. I think it's fine because he just used his little prince on the other side. I mean, I can literally just evolve skeletons on that for the memes. This is generally not a good decision, but he's not going to click the ability. He, he can't. He can't afford to. He's going to bomb tower into the evolved skeletons and freak out. Dude, it's still multiplying. How is that fair, Clash Royale? Can you, can you balance the card maybe just a little bit? It's totally broken. And then we're going to break down the evolved knight with the bomb and also get even more damage with the arrows. So I love this situation for us. We want to capture the miner every time with an ice spirit because we don't know where the miner is going to be. The ice spirit will jump and then reset the miner so then it targets onto the giant skeleton instead of our precious tower. And then you hard counter miner poison decks with bomb tower because in double elixir, they can't defend a giant skeleton, hog rider, lightning. If you lightning on top of the bomb tower, you'll always be able to break through. You'll always get value. We're just going to lightning here and then we're going to arrows and then we're going to be able to go in for that to uh, get as much damage as we want. As the giant skeleton's tanking, we crush the bomb tower. He can't hope to separate it far enough, even though he's a phenomenal player. Like, this guy is smart. He's dropping the bomb tower in the spot that I'm not able to lightning everything that I would want. But even though he's doing that, it's still not good enough. We can Little Prince in the back because I bet he's going to go minor. We can Ice Spirit here as well and have the Ice Spirit and Little Prince pulverize the minor and then get even more counter push. You guys see how frustrated he is? He's pissed to the point that he doesn't want to play the game anymore because this deck counters the entire meta and destroys minor poison. When you make a top player tilted to this point that they just refuse to play Clash Royale, you know that your matchup's pretty good. We got this guy hopeless to the point that he was spamming Goblin Laughter after the game till he went insane. I can say with 100% certainty, this man did not love it. As we hog his medals and ride our way up the leaderboard to 4,900 in the world. This guy's got the Cannoneer banner, but he's not playing the Cannoneer tower skin. Oh, wait, what is he doing? He's just going to go mini P.E.K.K.A. and bats at the start of the match. This guy is wildin'. So obviously, we need to go and pull the mini P.E.K.K.A. as much as we possibly can with our Hog Redder. We're doing three layers to the kite on defense. Oh my gosh, I was stretching out my wingspan. I was ready to just have a relaxing moment in the game while the Hog Redder hammered away in the tower. But the guy decided to go and body my Hog Redder with the Skeleton Army, making me respond to that with arrows a little bit faster. So I wonder what he's... Oh, it's Giant Graveyard. Oh my gosh. So one thing that I've realized whenever I play against a deck like this and I don't have my arrows in cycle, it's really important to kite the units to the middle. So then you can use your little prince to go and fully pull the minions directly towards the middle so then you can finish it off with your princess tower on the other side. Because if we let the minions go directly towards our building, well, what would have happened is the building would have got destroyed immediately. And then we're just sitting there with a whole bunch of minions flocking towards our tower and we would have no recourse or way of stopping it. So I bet you he's going to go regular minions. There's a chance he decides to do something else. He's actually going to go bats instead. This is a very bad ability on our end, but it could possibly maybe work out. If we had the Cannoneer, then obviously we would have to go in for the Giant Skeleton way earlier than that. But fortunately, since we have the Princess Tower, we're able to pulverize the Mini P.E.K.K.A. It'll only take remnants of Bats damage. 
if he goes in for mini P.E.K.K.A. plus like bats, it's not something that I have to arrow, but the minion ward, I will have to arrow every time. Also, Skeleton Army, I mean, this guy's got a crazy deck. I think we're fine here though. We can go for a Skeleton Surround, and that should be able to fully finish off the Sparky for a huge pause of Elixir trade. Unless this guy wants to go for another small spell, but I don't think he will. Skeleton Surround, and they pound. Yo, he's gonna zap, but it still didn't even kill the Skeletons. That's why they're broken. That is why they're utterly unfair. They're forcing out a zap and an arrows. Wait, does he just, does he just lose? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know. We knocked away the mini pack. The Little Prince is going to be able to finish off the mini pack. We can arrows on the Evolve Bats. Yo, let's go. That was incredible. We put him in a situation where he's forced to use his evolution directly into arrows. Now we are slightly scared because we know he's going to use Minion Horde soon. I kind of wanted to go in for a giant skeleton instead of dropping a skeleton because the skeletons can go and pull the Minion Horde to the other side. So I was thinking about that. Also, wait. We could spice this up with a lightning because it will take the tower and it will shock the Sparky quite literally. Let's go in for that. And then I believe that we're in a phenomenal spot where we're able to finish off the entire minion horde with our precious little prince. And then the Sparky dies to the giant skeleton. It just got bopped two times in a row. The bop never stops. Oh, dude, chill. Calm down. All right. Again, we got to go and pull this. I am not a huge fan of one bat surviving, but it is what it is. We are then going to go for an Ice Spirit, then go for another Tesla and get Skeletons down here. As long as I can kill this Giant and have Arrows back in cycle for the next Minion Horde, we're fine. But this guy! Look at the audacity that this man is delivering on a silver platter. Sparking through with the Sparky at the river and just trailblazing for all the talented players that love Bridge Spam. If you guys want a peak of chaos strategy, spam your Sparky at the river with the Skeleton Army because I've never seen someone do that before. It reeked of desperation and it definitely didn't work, but it was still pretty fun to see. No matter what insane matchup Clash Royale throws at you, with Giant Skeleton, Arrows, and Little Prince, you'll be safe against everything. And the Arrows instantaneously eliminate cheesy cards like Evolve Bats and Minion Horde, which is one of my favorite things about the deck because I hate losing to those strategies. And we've pushed up to 4,300 in the world. All right, we got another one here. So, I don't even know what this guy is doing. I've never seen him before in my life, and I don't understand the name. So, we're going to be going through with the Ice Spirit against this mysterious Sir. And, unfortunately, I actually just dropped it right into the Cannoneer Tower. I haven't played against Cannoneer in so many games that I forgot its existence. It's very strong at the higher ladder when you're playing Minor Poison decks. Primarily, Minor Poison Mortar is very good with it. But, it's not good with 90% of the decks. Like, if you're running a beatdown deck and you can't kill swarm cards because your deck is very inflexible, it's very bad then. So, I'm going to go for a Lightning. I do think that we're going to be able to kill a Lumberjack. It's a very aggressive play to do that, but, I mean, if he's going to offer me 7 Elixir worth of value with a 6 Elixir card, I'm going to take it. I also hit the tower for, like, 420 damage. So, overall, Lightning and Single Elixir is a stupid strategy, but if the opponent offers value on a Silver Platter, who am I to say no? Also, y'all already know, we're going to go Little Prince in the back, and we are going to get Golemed, which is totally fine, because we can go for a Tesla and pull the Golem as far as possible, and then hopefully we have the Bats get countered by our Little Prince, and then we can go Giant Skeleton afterward a little bit higher, so we don't get hit by a Lightning or a Fireball or a Poison or whatever spell that this guy's got. I mean, playing against a Golem deck is interesting, so I have to give him a bit more respect, because I haven't played against that many Golem players. Yeah, he's got Fireball. That's what I thought. I was like, you know, I, I gotta space out my stuff. Yo, please, Giant Skeleton. No, 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 no. Don't, don't pull them back. Oh, some of the barbs got saved. What is this Mercy Giant Skeleton? What are you trying to do, Hog Rider? Are you playing for us? Are you trying to lead the Barbarians away from the bomb? I think the Hog Rider was actually just like a paid actor. He was not on our team. That's unfortunate. That's, that's kind of lame, bro. I'd pay Elixir to not have that Hog Rider. Anyway, we're going to be going in for Giant Skeleton here. It's going to get Little Prince, but it's fine. Little Prince should walk into this bomb. I believe that the Little Prince is slightly stupid enough to do this. Maybe? Hopefully? Please? Come on? Yeah, let's go. I love seeing that. So, Night Witch is a bit obnoxious. We can always go for a Lightning on that to eviscerate it. Uh, I don't think that that's going to be our best play or our best option right now. Instead, we're going to try to go for a Tesla, and that might pull the Golem. Okay, it was very close to not pulling the Golem for a second. Now we're gonna go for our Evolved Skeletons and the Night Witch, and I think that we're fine if we go in for a... Eros? Question mark? Yeah, we're fine. We're chilling. Hog Rider's gonna lock on the tower. One of the best things that the top Hog Rider players will do that sets them apart from people that are just learning the defensive mechanics is they'll apply pressure while defending. They'll be like, hey, I know I can defend, so let's go in for offense at the same time. And that's what I've been doing in this game. I've been playing very aggressive while playing defensive at the same time because then our opponent will have less elixir. They will always have less elixir when they are going in for offense. 
when they're going in for offense, that's the, their weakest point. So it kind of is scary to be able to do that, but it is worth it if you are capable. I'm going to go for a giant skeleton here, and I could lightning on everything, but it's generally a bit better to just use our Tesla because we know he's going to have fireball. So he's going to... Uh, he's going to have fireball and lightning. Yeah, okay. All right, dude. Sick. Nice strategy, my guy. All right, we're going to go in for a hog rider here because he's going to be down a lot of elixir. And I don't think he's able to afford the barbarians immediately. Oh, he was not able to, so that's great. The one bat is going to hurt me, but I think that we're not going to lose the game to it. That's going to be very scary. I mean, lightning... Wait, he takes me out if he goes in for a lightning plus, like, fireball. I'm not going to let him do that. I'm going to go for a hog rider, and then I'm going to try to lightning arrows. Jeez, dude. I don't know if I win or if I lose. This is going to be very close. I think I do win, maybe, if I can just get the lightning before the barbarian hits. Oh, let's go! <laughs> By the skin of my teeth, we destroyed Mr. Skinner. And it feels fantastic to say that we're the winner, because that match was incredibly close. As we close into higher ranks on the leaderboard at 3,800 in the world. I'm not going to lie, matching into Evolved Barbarians when you have Lightning Hog Rider is an extremely difficult matchup. You have no spell to break through the Barbarians, so you have to apply pressure when the opponent doesn't have enough Elixir. And because you have a faster cycle with the Little Prince, Ice Spear, and Skeletons, it's nice to be able to outcycle the Barbarians so you can find damage. If I didn't play clean defense for the first part of the match, there was no doubt I would have got Lightning and Fireball cycled. For anyone when playing Hog Rider Lightning, his deck is straight out of a horror movie. All right, my guy had a Golden Knight in the banner, so I feel like if you actually like Golden Knight, you have to be running Electro Giant. So I'm going to go for our Skeletons in the back and try to preserve our sanity right now and not spam everything at the river. But you guys know me at heart. I love bridge spamming. And with Giant Skeleton, this deck functions a bit differently. You want to be playing a lot more aggressive in double elixir after identifying the deck and being able to Lightning. But in single, you're going to have very high cost cards. It's not like a standard Hog Rider deck with Fireball where you can get away, which is like randomly Fireballing in single elixir and then like hitting the Little Prince and then being like, hey, yeah, you know, I took a little bit of a negative trade, but I'm not going to die. If you Lightning a Little Prince in single elixir, you're screwed. It's a Lightning fast way to lose. So this guy, he let us get a Hog Rider hit early. So that's obviously very good. Generally, in Single Elixir, our strategy is just going to be using the Giant Skeleton and counter pushing with the Lone Hog Rider. And that works out really well. Like right now, the Giant Skeleton, anything that our opponent uses from a unit department, it's going to get blown away. Also, he's dropping in a spot where he's going to avoid the bomb. But like, <laughs> are you able to avoid that, my guy? Probably not. We're going to Ice Spirit really far away in case he wanted to click the ability. And yeah, he's just going to give us the double thumbs up. I think we won this one. There's nothing really else to say. Very easy victory. And that's the power of Hog Rider Lightning. You can win games extremely fast with the Evolved Skeletons or the Giant Skeleton. Giant Skeleton spooked our opponent to the point that he didn't have any answers to the Hog here. I gotta say, for a new deck that I haven't played before, this deck dominates, which is a definite sign of a good deck. In the easy matchups, you're able to force mistakes out of the opponent to win even faster. And in the tough ones, you can outplay and outmaneuver to finesse wins in even the worst situations. For long ladder sessions, this deck is perfect because the early wins will gain you a lot of medals quick while allowing you to hold on to them and not lose to too many crazy decks in the process. If you enjoyed me breaking down one of the best decks to climb up the leaderboard, hammer the like button, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks.